Want to see a run of me completing the community centre and missing bundle as early as possible? Here we go. This run was completed on 1.4. This means that I don't have access to the guaranteed red cabbage seed from the cart, or the chance to have them drop from monsters in Skull Caverns. I'm playing on a single set seed. Out of 4.8 billion seeds, this run is only possible on about half a dozen. Day 1 has me show off some brand new tech. Clay farming. Hang on, I hear you say. I know about clay farming. You explained it in previous videos. That is true. This run was the first time clay farming was shown off, and the reason I added the mode to the predictor. This was before Piano had developed his clay patterns. I buy a piece of copper to trigger the Clint cutscene tomorrow for the furnace recipe. It wasn't planned, but the dish of the day at the saloon today is a fish taco. Starting fishing with a plus 2 buff will help to snowball fishing XP, as fish will be a lot easier to perfect. Day 2. I'm upgrading my pickaxe today to make the mines easier. I'll pick this up on Thursday before the mines open. Day 2 is the first day that geodes can drop from rocks on the farm. I collect 4 of them to open at Clint's before I start fishing. The third geode contains 5 copper, and the fourth contains a dwarvish helm. By finding an artifact before I start fishing, I unlock artifacts in the fishing chest loot pool. I need to access the sewers this run, so any artifact I can fish up will be a great help to get the 60 items required to get the rusty key. Other than that, I am fishing for money. Day 3. More fishing. Enough said. Day 4. The last day before the mines open. I pick up my copper pick, ready for the mines tomorrow. The mines are my main source of cash for the run. There is a lot of money requirements. I need to complete the vault, upgrade my house, and upgrade to a big coop and a deluxe barn. And I need to buy a lot of stone. You will see why later. Day 5. To the mines! I am making full use of my RNG Minip and Prediction tools. This means I can predict what rocks will drop me ladders and geodes which translates to fast mines progress. Eventually, I'll reach the bottom, but for now, I will be stopping at 80. I'll be collecting hundreds of geodes and gold ore to finance the run. I am also on a tight schedule. I have a lot of buildings to order, and I need to get the first one going on Sunday for everything to be done in time. Day 6. Time to open the CC. I could have done this yesterday, but I was fully focused on progressing in the mines. I also handed my axe to be upgraded. I want access to the secret woods in spring to get a common mushroom, and in summer to collect the fiddlehead fern. I have other ways of getting these items, but I want the secret woods as an option. I descend in the mines to reach floor 80. I need a better weapon than a forest sword to clear out the monsters. So I reset floor 41 until a crate spawns on a wooden mallet tile. A club's special attack is crazy overpowered. My default task is gathering geodes. If I have done my chores for the day, assume I am in the mines, gathering geodes. For the most part, on a game seed, geodes will always generate on the same tiles as long as a valid rock has spawned. The spots only change if a free ladder or a ladder from the rock has dropped. The day does not matter. Once I have learned the spots, they will stay there for the rest of the file. Do note that if I chose Geologist, or if I get the magnifying glass in winter, the spots would change. Good thing the challenge will be well and truly done by then. Day 7. The most valuable resource I have to complete this run is the travelling cart. There are 9 items that absolutely need to appear in the cart by the end of spring, and an additional 3 out of a pool of 18 items. The rest of the summer crops will be grown with a fairy on the night of summer 1. The red cabbage is a strange case. It is a summer crop, but the seeds aren't sold until year 2. I am not on 1.5, so I don't have the year 1 guaranteed option to help nor do I have the option to get them from Skull Cavern Monsters. This seed doesn't have either the red cabbage or the seeds in the cart. So what am I going to do? You'll see. 
The traveling cart today has the first required item, a hazelnut. I also pick up a large goat milk, so I don't have to buy a goat later. It is time to start handing in items to the community centre. I visit the wizard to teach me the language of the Junimos and head to the community centre. I have been foraging and also collecting hardwood from the mines, so I complete the spring crops and construction bundles. This unlocks the boiler room. I have already collected all the items for the boiler room, so I complete my first room. I order the first building. I need a deluxe barn and a big coop, as well as a fish pond and a house upgrade. I make a start on the coop. I need to get a duck early to let me get friendship up to get a duck feather to drop. Then, back to the mines. Day 8. My copper axe is ready, but it's not good enough. Clint, make it steel. I would love to have my pick upgraded again. It would make this geode farming a lot easier and it would be a great help in the Skull Caverns when I make it there. Skull Caverns is a better source of money, and I need a prismatic shard and a dino egg for the missing bundle. Day 9 One of the most awkward items I need to collect are apples. Three apples of the same quality. Remember, I am on 1.4, before the community centre would combine qualities for you. I am relying on the farm cave to give me my apples. I do have an ace up my sleeve. Gatherer lets me pick up double forage. And the double spots are predictable. Checking the farm cave reveals I have had an apple spawn already. This is huge, as I was planning on brute forcing farm cave spawns later on. However, brute forcing requires me to effectively throw a day away. I'll explain more later. Today, I spend all day geode farming. I take a pit stop at the saloon to stock up on coffee, and notice some pepper poppers for some extra move speed. Day 10. I mentioned before about guessing a number of items from the travelling cart. I didn't mention another source of out of season items, Krobus' shop. On Wednesdays, Krobus sells a random fish. On the 24th, this random fish will be a tiger trout. So, I will need to donate 60 items to the museum. Most of them can be from geodes, but I do need to keep all the gems and artifacts I find in the mines for donating. I have my steel axe to pick up. I hand in my pick to also upgrade to steel. While I'm here, I hand in the minerals and artifacts I have collected so far. I forget to check my energy level before chopping a tree. And I am forced to do the walk of shame to get to Robin's before she closes at 5. I gotta keep my buildings going. So I order a big coop. Day 11. In order to get the gatherer profession, I need to get foraging XP. So I chop the hardwood stumps in the secret woods for 25 XP each. A common mushroom and morale has spawned. I pick these up and do a hand in of all the items I've collected so far. You may have noticed I put in a yam. This dropped from a daggy in the mines. I don't have my copper pick. On this version, you can take spear tools from a cabin, so I get my hands on a basic pick. It is a pain to use for this geode farming though, so I spend the day hunting dust sprites. I'm hoping to get my hands on the burglar's ring, which can help me get extra loot in the skull caverns. Looking back on this in hindsight, this was not worth the time investment. Oh well. Day 12. Another cart day. I pick up a sturgeon and a pufferfish. I could catch the pufferfish myself in summer, but since it is available now, I want to be lazy. The sturgeon is another fish that I could catch myself in summer. However, I need to get caviar for the missing bundle. If I were to catch the sturgeon myself on summer 1 and put it in a fish pond, I would not get the row or have the row process into caviar in time. I have to buy this one. There are a few tapper products to get from the community centre, so I craft and place a tapper on an oak tree. I need farming level 4 by the end of the run. The best crop for XP right now is kale. I buy just enough to give me level 4, as well as parsnips that I plant on tiles that will be gold on the 27th, and the other crops I need for the spring crops bundle. 
My steel pick is ready, so I pick that up. I really want to get the desert unlocked soon, so I delay the gold pick upgrade to both not spend the upgrade money and to speed up mining today. I also start construction on my barn. The rest of the day is spent in the mines. 81 just happens to be a mushroom floor today, which helps with foraging XP. Unfortunately, the mushrooms only spawn once. Day 13. Today is the egg festival, but I don't care. I water the crops, chop the hardwood stumps, and spend the rest of the day in the mines. I've earned enough forage XP for level five, so overnight, I choose gatherer. Day 14. I have a wall eye to purchase in the cart. I also have a few animals to purchase. I purchase a white chicken and two ducks. There is a large brown egg in the cart next week, so I don't need a brown chicken. Two ducks give me the opportunity to get the duck feather in time. The rest of the day is spent in the mines. At the end of the day, I have broken enough rocks to give me mining level 10. It is here that I realise that I haven't been optimal with my gold. At the time I was doing this run, Habu and Cordite were doing one year min-max runs, trying to get the maximum amount of money possible in one year. In these runs, the desert is prioritised, and Skull Caverns used as a big source of money, as Iridium Bars with Blacksmith sell for 1,500 G each. I am planning to get to the desert soon, and use the source of money myself. However, I have had to prioritise other things, like my farm buildings, first. In the min max runs, there is a major shortage of coal, as one piece is used for every 5 Iridium Ore. This coal is purchased from Clint for 150 G each. Since gold ore sells for 25 G each, and a gold bar sells for 250 G each, one piece of coal adds 125 G of value to the ore. In min-max runs, it is not worth using early coal to smelt gold bars for selling, as this coal costs 150 G to replace, and is more valuable later to add 500 G of value to iridium ore or 1000G with blacksmith. My run is so short that I will never get through all my coal. I will never need to purchase it from Clint for 150G. I should not be selling my gold or raw. I should be smelting gold bars, especially now that I have blacksmith, so my gold bars will sell for 375G each. I decide to redo day 14, and craft myself a small army of furnaces to start stacking some gold bars. This should help me to actually get ahead on money and actually getting the vault completed. I decide to only buy one duck on the redo. I can't remember why. Day 15. Guess where I spend most of my day? Did you say the beach? Really? Why? I spend the day in the mines. Before Clint closes, I pay him a visit. My plan is to sell enough to be able to complete the vault and upgrade my pick. Stupidly, I don't keep 5 bars for the upgrade, so no upgrade for me. I pump the money into coffee instead. Day 16. The barn is ready, so I want to upgrade it today. Trouble is, today is Tuesday. Robin doesn't stand at her desk today. Fortunately, there are some tiles in the shop that if Robin is on them, you can open the shop menu. Robin walks into town for aerobics class, so as long as I'm in the shop at the right time, I can still order my upgrade. I don't have the money right now, so I need to make a pit stop at Clint's first to sell some gold bars. I mentioned before how I need access to the sewers. Now that the desert is unlocked, I can trade my Omnis in for artifact troves to help fill out the museum to 60 items to receive the rusty key from Gunther. I head to the desert to pick up 15 artifact troves and a desert warp totem. This totem will be used to get me to the desert early to give me a full day in the skull caverns. I pick up a cactus fruit for the exotic forage bundle and head back to the valley. I head over to Clint's and start opening my geodes. Since I know my seed, I will be opening my geodes in a specific order to get the items I am after. As well as artifacts, treasure troves also contain some items that sell for a fair bit of G. 
I take full advantage. Another important item found in the troves are ancient seeds. I need to get my hands on 5 gold quality ancient fruit for the missing bundle. My troves have 4 ancient seed artifacts early in the list, so I grab all of them, and will grind the bugs in the mines for the last one. Both the vault and the museum have given me a crystallarium. I set both of these up with jades. On Sundays, jades can be traded in for staircases at the Desert Trader. I want a lot of staircases for the Skull Caverns later. In summer, I will be performing a secret manip. To make the manip easier, I want all trees and grass cut. I make a start on clearing these out today. I will be using a fish pond filled with mussels to get a nautilus shell. For this, I need mussels. I craft some crab pots and place them on tiles that should give me mussels tomorrow. Day 17. Guntler delivers the rusty key. Nice. Also, my predictor is broken for crab pots. Not so nice. I head to Marnie's to buy a cow for the barn. I couldn't do this yesterday as Marnie wasn't around. I got four ancient seeds from Troves yesterday, but I need one more. I hunt for one from bugs, grubs, and flies without success. I change track and decide to progress in the mines. I need to get to 120 to collect the skull key. Today, I stop at 100. I need to complete the artisan bundle by the 23rd to get a keg to make wine. On Wednesdays, the desert trader trades three aquamarines for one of the artisan items, cloth. This is the last Wednesday before my deadline, so I make the trade today. Day 18. The cave has spawned another artisan good, an apricot. I go to pick up the apple and realise that yesterday was the day to harvest it to get two. Oops. No worries, there will be another opportunity. Kale is ready, time to harvest. This gives me farming level 4 for the preserves jar and for the qualities of crops when I do my harvest in summer. I check in on my crab pots. Still no mussels. The big barn is ready so I can order the deluxe barn. I spend the afternoon in the mines and finally hand my steel pick in to upgrade to gold. I head to the secret woods to fish up a wood skip. Since I'm in a fishing mood, I head to mines floor 60 and fish up a ghost fish. I resume the hunt for the last ancient seed. No luck. Day 19. I get another spawn in the farm cave. A peach. Unfortunately, I already had one of these spawn. The duck has grown up, and the very first thing it drops for me is a feather. Nice! I can't sell the duck yet, as I still need a duck egg. It is a Friday, and the travelling cart is in town. Now this cart is brilliant. It has a large egg, a pumpkin, a crocus, five wheat, and an eggplant. There is also a fish stew here. This gives a plus three buff to fishing, and I'm currently fishing level seven. This gives me an idea. I buy it. I complete the crab pot bundle and collect the reward of three crab pots. I haven't fixed the predictor, but I have brute forced a prediction. I loaded up a copy of the farm on Smappy and flooded the beach with crab pots. I then noted the spots that would give me a muscle. These spots move up one tile each day, so I should be sorted on muscles. I fish up a sardine and some seaweed. I need the seaweed for the fish pond. I head to the desert and buy honey from Sandy for the artisan bundle, and fish up a sandfish. I also trade in my emeralds for cheese. One of these is for artisan, the rest will be to heal when I do a caverns dive. I only have a basic pick, but I do some geode farming anyway. I start to focus on stone as well. I need some for the fish pond upgrade tomorrow, and I need a lot of stone near the end of the run. This is painful. I miss my upgraded pick. Day 20. Gold pick! Yay! The oak resin is ready, so I move the tapper to a maple tree. 
I finally get a load of mussels in my crab pots. I did miss one, so I set them up again for even more mussels tomorrow. I head up to the mines to get some more stone, and to hunt frost jellies for the winter root drop. I take a break and head to Robin's to order my fish pond. I was under the impression that the fish pond takes 3 days to build. It actually takes 2 days to build. Expecting to load my sturgeon on the 23rd, I place the pond to give me a sturgeon row drop on the 24th. Today is the absolutely last day to buy a pig. The deluxe barn just got finished. This is the reason Robin has been neglecting her family for the last two weeks. I head to Marnie's and buy a pig. I do some more diving in the mines. Unfortunately, I spent all of my stone ordering a fish pond and I hit two big monster levels. I could have foreseen this, but I forgot to check. I stop at floor 115. If I were to get to 120 now, all monsters would be buffed to up to double HP and extra damage. I hunt some more for a winter root and an ancient seed. I finally get the ancient seed at 1240, but still no winter root. Day 21. Today is a Stepman up day. I'm going to bed super early. If you know your seed, the day, the weather for tomorrow, the total number of steps you have taken, and the number of machines that will be processing an item at 6am the following morning, you can manipulate various overnight RNG calculations. The obvious one to manip is daily luck. I could also manip the dish of the day, the weather for Tuesday, and who would send me a gift if I had bothered to become friends with anyone. I can also manip the farm cave tonight. The spawning of fruit in the farm cave uses the same random object used for all of the above. This is not as straightforward though, as the farm gets updated first. The current state of the farm, i.e. the number of trees, the number of fully grown trees, the number of empty tilled ground, and more, all use this random, and changes the state of it for when it is used in the farm cave, which can change the fruit drops. I don't have a good way of predicting this, so I brute force it. I alter the farm slightly, take my steps, then sleep. If I don't get an apple or a pomegranate, then I revert and alter the farm in a different way. I spend an hour of this on the stream, planting up to 27 trees, but don't get the results I'm after. After exploring and testing off stream, I finally find a combination that gives me what I want. Day 22. I have my apples. If I get one to double with Gatherer, that is the three I need for the fodder bundle. With the jelly that is ready today, I am able to hand in the artisan bundle and collect the keg. I set this going so that I can have wine in time. I finish the last five floors of the mines and it is time to tackle the skull caverns. There are a few things I need from skull caverns. Serpents have a 0.8% chance to drop a rabbit's foot. I don't have the time to upgrade my coop to deluxe to raise my own rabbit, so this is what I'm using to get the foot. I also need to get a dino egg to make dino mayonnaise and a prismatic shard for the missing bundle. I would also like to buy a magic rock candy, so I need another three prismatics. I can get a fiddlehead fern in summer in the secret woods, but as they spawn on dino floors, I might as well get one here. For the missing bundle to even open, there needs to be a rain day after the community centre is complete. I could step in it for this, but I would rather guarantee it with a rain totem from a treasure floor. There is a 1 out of 24 chance to get a rain totem from a treasure floor. Finally, I need a red cabbage seed. Now, remember at the beginning of the video how I said that I was playing on 1.4? I cannot get a red cabbage seed from monsters here. I can get one from a treasure floor though. Want to know the chances? Each treasure floor has a 1 out of 648 chance of holding red cabbage seeds.
I will get into the details of treasure floors and my approach to this later. Also, any money I get, mainly iridium ore, will be a big help later. Now, I know the theory behind the caverns, but I actually have very little experience exploring it myself. I gradually get my confidence up, but it takes a while. Using salmon berries to slowly heal, no explosive ammo, and only a lead rod for combat doesn't help. I have a run that nets three rain totems, a dino egg, one prismatic shard, and 98 iridium. This is enough loot to keep the day and to come back for the rest another day. Day 23. Another day to throw away for a step minute. 31 steps in sleeping give me perfect daily luck and a pomegranate in the farm cave. Leaving the house messes up the pomegranate spawn, so all I can do is to take 31 steps and sleep. However, this messes up friendship with the cow. If I don't pet and milk the cow today, I won't get a large milk in time. However, I do work out a backup. I have just enough time for a sheep to grow up, so I can share it for wool. 31 steps and sleep. Day 24. I want tomorrow to rain for reasons. The sturgeon row is ready to harvest. I collect it and load up the pond with mussels. These will eventually give me a sea urchin and a nautilus shell. Also, today is the day I needed sewer access, so I better make sure I use it. I go purchase tiger trout from Krobus. Daily luck is the absolute highest it can be, so we are going diving in the caverns. I'm after a rabbit's foot and either three prismatic shards or red cabbage seeds. I am heavily predicting the iridium nodes. I can't force them to spawn, but I can check to see if they drop a prismatic shard before or after a ladder drops, effectively doubling the chance of getting a prismatic shard from each node. It takes a while, but I get what I need, and a nice pile of iridium ore to smelt. I almost forget to swap my fish pond over. Phew. Day 25. I have a fish pond quest for 5 clay. I dig this up and throw some more mussels in. I make a mayonnaise machine to get the dino egg processing. On Thursdays, the desert trader sells magic rock candy for 3 prismatic shards. The luck buff will be a great help in getting treasure floors in the skull caverns. When I realised that I couldn't get a large milk, I almost sold the cow. I'm glad I didn't, as I need a milk for the farmer's lunch dish to get me the crop quality I need. I pop down to Marnie's and buy a sheep. I didn't do it yesterday as I wanted as much time as possible in Skull Caverns. I used a rain totem yesterday for reasons. Those reasons are for swag. I have food that give a plus 3 fishing buff and a natural fishing level of 7. Since it is spring and raining, I can catch a legend. Totally not needed for the challenge. I am only catching it for the style points. Though, fishing here also lets me catch a bullhead, which I do need for the community centre. I think that was the first time I ever caught a legend. Now, I need to actually get a winter route. Well, that's everything I need to do today. I focus on gathering stone until the current round of Iridium is done. I sell my spare weapons to the Adventures Guild and do a community centre hand in. I'm glad I did because I realise I still need to catch an eel. So I go do that. I want to display the legend on the table. Turns out I don't know how to do it. Weird. Anyway, I have an early night. Day 26. My fish pond has given me a sea urchin. I throw in some quartz and some more mussels. 
I have to be careful with the next quest, as it is possible for the muscles to request wild bait, and I haven't even met Linus. By moving the pond one spot to the left, the quest will be a solar essence. I'll have to move it again tomorrow to get the Nautilus shell. The chicken has given me a large egg. Thanks! The cart has a red snapper in it. The red snapper can be caught in summer, but only in the rain. The way I have summer planned, I won't have a rain day before I complete the community centre, so I buy it from the cart. I only need one more round of the furnaces to get through all my iridium, so I farm stone while waiting for the current batch to finish. Day 27. I need to minute the luck for tomorrow. This will help with getting treasure floors. I decide to play the day without counting steps at first, so I know exactly what I need to do. There are a few things I need to do today. I only need one cauliflower, so I decide to grow a giant one, just because I can. The parsnips I have been leaving in the ground are all gold today, so I pick them up for the quality crops bundle. I have my iridium bars and other ores to sell, so I do this at Clint's. I then head to Robin's to move the fish pond to give me a nautilus shell, upgrade my house, and then use all my remaining money on stone. These will become ladders, which will help with getting treasure floors. The apple I have been leaving in the cave gets doubled by a gatherer today, so I pick that up for the fodder bundle. By chance, I happen to roll a star drop day. It's not max, but it is high daily luck. Day 28. This is it. The end of spring. A Sunday. This is the day I am going to get red cabbage seeds. I do have chores to do on the farm, and some things to buy at the cart, but that can wait till after the cabbage seeds are acquired. Now, treasure floors. Starting from floor 10, every floor in the caverns has a chance of having a chest on it. This chance starts at 1%, daily luck affects this from a range of negative 1 to positive 1%. Finally, you add 1% for each point of luck buff. 1.4 does not have access to luck rings or ginger ale. My daily luck adds 0.82% and my magic rock candy adds 5% for a total chance of 6.82%. The absolute maximum is 7%. So I am reasonably close to this. I have been collecting staircases. All the stone I bought yesterday went straight into staircases. And the crystallariums I have have been producing jade for me. Since today is a Sunday, the Desert Trader will give me one staircase for every jade I trade. This means I am heading into the caverns with 105 staircases, for at least 96 shots to hit the 6.82% chance. Of course, once I get the treasure floor, I need to hit the chance for it to be red cabbage seeds. On 1.4 there are 24 categories of items, each with an even chance. If I hit the seeds category, there are 27 different seeds, each with an even chance. This means, for each treasure floor, there is a 1 out of 648 chance that I get red cabbage seeds. 0.1543% each treasure floor that I get red cabbage seeds. 0.0105% that a ladder leads me to a floor with red cabbage seeds. Due to the nature of how treasure floors and their contents are determined, I cannot predict them. I have to brute force them. Well, let's get started. There is going to be a lot of resets. Fortunately, I set my inventory up on the 27th so I can go straight to the desert. Each attempt starts the same. I eat food for speed race to the desert trader, then into the caverns. Then I place ladders, over and over and over and over and over and over again. I get an average of 6.5 treasure floors per attempt, so I should get my red cabbage seeds within, uh, sorry one second, 648, uh, within 100 resets. Settle in, we may be here a while.
You may notice that I get a lot more cactus seeds than any other kind of seed. That is because cactus seeds have their own top level category. It is 1 out of 24 to get cactus seeds, instead of the 1 out of 648 for any other kind of seed. It hurts whenever I get any kind of seeds other than red cabbage. I hit the seeds category, but miss the cabbages. There is a glitch in the game when you open a special chest that contains exactly 15 parsnip seeds. You get the note from Lewis saying, here's a little something to get you started. It would be quite a prank to require the player to get their starter seeds here before they could do any farming. Getting this message is four times as unlikely as finding red cabbage seeds. I got it twice. Adding up the footage for the run up until this red cabbage seed grind started, it has taken 29 hours. In my quest to get the red cabbage seeds, it took 21 hours over 11 streams. 21 hours of placing ladders, hoping to hit a treasure floor, hoping to get a red cabbage seed out of the chest. On the plus side, these were the easiest streams to plan. I had 196 attempts. I opened 1,462 chests. I found 1,065 cactus seeds, 116 rain totems, 220 quality sprinklers, 329 farm warp totems, 72 prismatic shards, 108 cowboy hats, and 785 seeds that weren't red cabbage. I didn't have the luxury of a time-lapsed opening sequence. I also didn't have the luxury of seeing what was in this chest. Oops. And I still didn't have it. I decided to redo day 27, this time counting steps to ensure I get absolutely perfect daily luck, and increase my 6.82% chance of getting a treasure floor to 7%. Steps work differently on 1.4. Starter stepping doesn't always work. I have to literally walk and never walk straight up. If I need to walk up, I need to do it in a zigzag pattern. And whenever I zag or zig, I have to remove all vertical movement. But finally, after getting this increased percentage, and after chat performed the ritual of the emote spam, it happened. Oh! Yes! That's it! We got it! This was the 213th attempt. The 1578th chest opened. I am free. Now, the rest of day 28. Do not mess this up. Do not forget anything. I do not want to have to find another seed packet on a treasure floor. I visit the travelling cart to pick up a snow yam corn and another 5 wheat. I make sure to collect the nautilus shell from the fish pond and I clear the farm of absolutely all grass and all trees. All trees except for the one that has the tapper on it. I also watch TV. The recipe is for an omelette which is an ingredient for farmer's lunch. Farmer's lunch gives me a farming level boost which is very important soon. Day 29. Summer 1. Finally a new season. I need to pick up forage, fish up a couple of fish, and grow a few crops. My plan is to complete the community centre tomorrow. But how will the summer crops be ready in time? With a fairy. Tonight, a fairy will visit and instantly grow 25 crops. By planting my 5x5 grid on a specific spot, I ensure that 10 spots will give gold crops tomorrow and 5 spots will give gold crops on the 3rd for the missing bundle. Now, to manipulate the spot the fairy chooses. I have a 5x5 grid, but only the middle spot can be targeted if I want everything to grow. The tile the fairy chooses is seeded. The fairy will try 100 times to find a tile that is tilled ground that has a seed in it that is still growing. The collection the fairy looks in contains all terrain features on the farm. This includes all grass, all flooring, and all trees, including tree seeds. I ensure that no grass, 
and no unnecessary trees exist. I do have one tree that needs to stay as I need the maple syrup from it. Overnight a fully grown tree can spawn a seed. This can throw off the fairy and cause her to hit a different crop. So I surround the tree with fences. This covers all the possible spots a new tree could spawn on, ensuring that I don't get one. I take note of the order I till the ground, and note which tile the fairy hits. By tilling the ground in a different order on a reset, I can direct the fairy to the middle tile. I head into town and purchase the corn, blueberry, pepper, tomato, poppy and sunflower seeds. I already have melon seeds from the museum, and of course I have my red cabbage seeds. I also work out how to display the legend on the table. It takes a couple of goes to get the fairy to hit the right tile, but I do have success. It is worth noting that fairies do not like rain. If Summer 2 was raining, the fairy would not come. Fortunately, Summer 2 cannot rain naturally. You can make it rain with a rain totem on Summer 1 if you really wanted to though. Day 30. Summer 2. Community Centre Completion Day. Have I forgotten anything? The first thing I do is make an omelette and a farmer's lunch. This gives me the farming level needed for 5 of my melons and corn to be gold quality. I also harvest the pepper, tomato, poppy, sunflower, blueberry and red cabbage. I chop my giant cauliflower, collect the maple syrup and shear the sheep. I collect a grape and sweet pea from the bus stop, collect the wine from the community centre, do a hand in then head to the beach for the final fish. I also need my pig to produce a truffle, but that should be done by the time I get back to the farm. And look at that, it is. Now for the cooked dishes. Fried egg is simple. I have leftover eggs from my chicken. For maki roll, I got a seaweed from fishing today, and I had previously purchased rice. I need to make sure that I don't cook a fish that I need to hand in. Fortunately, I have such a fish already on display. That's it, Summer 2, Year 1, and the Community Centre is complete. Now for the Missing Bundle. In order to open the Missing Bundle, you need to watch the cutscene of the completed Community Centre that triggers the next sunny day in town. After that, the Missing Bundle opens the morning of the next rain day. I really hope tomorrow is sunny. Day 31. Summer 3. It is sunny! I harvest the ancient fruit. They are all gold. We are in business. I use a rain totem so the missing bundle will open tomorrow. I head into town and trigger the community centre cutscene. Chat had a Pierre vs Morris sized battle to decide to see the Pierre vs Morris battle. And Pierre makes a Morris sized hole in my freshly restored community centre. One more item to collect. I head to the railroad to trigger the quest that unlocks the mutant buglier. I head into the mutant buglier to collect the dark talisman. I finally head back to the railroad and enter the witch's swamp. A couple of casts later and I have my hands on a gold quality void salmon. I have five gold quality ancient fruit. I have a prismatic shard. I have a gold quality void salmon. I have dinosaur mayonnaise. I have caviar. I have rain. The abandoned Joja Mart opens. I make the final run into town. I head into the abandoned Joja Mart. I hand in the items. Bundle complete. Run 
complete. Community Center complete on Summer 2, Year 1. Missing Bundle complete on Summer 4, Year 1. Thanks for watching this epic run. Can I beat this run? Yes, if I utilize Remix Bundles and Dynamic Seeds. Subscribe and keep an eye out for that run.